Okay, so we'll start by building this test needs Perl module. So I'm going to go to the sources directory. I'm in the truth, that's absolutely correct. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a directory called BLFS because these tools are going to install it are from BLFS. So, um, got a problem here of how do we download files because we've got no method to download them. So now that's making me think wget might actually be the better one to um, install first. So I will actually do this one. You can see this has got a recommendation of make CA, which is, you can see the link colors actually changed because um, it's a requirement we've already opened for um, the NTP package. So I'm just going to move this tab next to wget so I know that that's a requirement of it. Um, and you'll see that this in fact has got its own requirement of P11kit. And this has got some recommendations as well. It's got make CA but it's only runtime so it's not a circular dependency luckily. Um, but it recommends libtazen and that looks like that's the end of the dependency tree. So um, what I'm going to do now is because we haven't got any way, well there is one way of downloading. We've got um, an FTP client. You can see it's run. Um, that's the only realistic way. There's no curl or wget or anything available to download. There's no curl, there's no wget. There's no method of downloading from HTTP, let alone HTTPS um, protocol URLs. Um, so we really are stuck. Um, there is a way around this to build up gradually. Normally I like to just go straight into the Linux from scratch system and build it up bit by bit. Because um, then I know for sure that the system I'm building is based on the Linux from scratch system. And there is no interaction from the host. But... I'm doing it this way because it's a bit more convenient. I'm just doing it a little bit differently this time. So what we can do is we can get these files um, through another tab. I'm going to uh, yeah, I'll load another tab up here. I'll just get top running in that one so we can see what's going on if we need to. Um, so I'm going to become root in this window cd into linux from scratch so i'm in there i'm going to change into the sources and then change into the blfs directory so i'm in the blfs directory of the linux from scratch file system but this is the root that's part of the raspberry pi operating system whereas this is the root obviously in the truth in our new lfs system so what I can do is I can download the files from the Raspberry Pi root and they'll appear obviously in the file system and they'll, they'll be visible within the truth. So let's grab the first package, copy link address, paste it in here with wget. And that's downloaded. So if we look at that here, you can see there's the file that's been downloaded. So now if we go into our truth environment, do a listing, you can see there's libtazen as we've just downloaded it. So we'll extract this, similar sort of procedures before, extract it, change into the directory, and then you can run the commands. So generally with these commands, because it's less about learning about Linux from, uh, from scratch, um, you'll see what they've done is they chain the commands together with and 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 what that does that says that if this command completes successfully run that command so that means if this produces an error of any sort it will stop there and it won't run the make command so it's quite a convenient way of doing things it means you can just copy this all in one go and get the configure and make done um, you can walk away and do something else because it's spending more time compiling without any interaction. Certainly on the um, slightly large packages that's an advantage.
And remember, we've got the C flags um, active, so they're going to be used, and also the make um, files is set to J4, so we should see um, multiple threads being used, multiple cores being used, and as you can see, all the numbers are high here, so that is a good indication that um, several threads are running concurrently. So that's run. We can run the make check um, to see if there's any errors and if so, how catastrophic they are. Um, in theory, we may get errors as we've seen building LFS. Um, I'd say if you do get errors, I would hope that they're just the odd error here and there. If there's a spread of errors, you know, like loads of errors, then there is something seriously wrong with the build. So that has um, built, we can do make install as it's got here. Uh, spell it right, this is why copy and pasting is good, there's less chance of errors. And then if you did not pass the enable GTK doc parameter, which we didn't, um, you can install some documentation if you wish. So let's have a go at that. Uh, one thing to say about BLFS, there's under command explanations, there's normally some extra optional switches that aren't in the configure command that they give you. So this is where you um, have to make decisions about whether you enable or want extra functionality or not. So in this case, the um, this parameter is um, if you want to install the documentation but you haven't got the code to um, build the API con um, to, if you haven't got the code to build the documentation um, in fact this is for API documentation so it's a bit unnecessary installing that but never mind um, that would only be used if you're um, obviously developing so that's that package installed so we can remove the source directory and now I can get rid of that tab knowing that's been installed and move on to p11kit so we don't need to do make ca because that's a runtime requirement not a compile time requirement so we can just go ahead and build this so let's copy the address in the other tab we'll do wget again so again this is in the raspberry pi route and that's downloaded remember to move back to the LFS root and we can extract it now uh, p11 kit and start building it so it needs a specific distribution or distribution specific anchor hook whatever that is and then we can you know it's sometimes worth reading the command explanations in case there any, is anything um, extra um, really just want to get this going so just get something going and then if, if there is anything else that you want to build extra you can come back and rebuild the package with, with that extra functionality if you decide that's what you want So you can see the configures running. When that finishes, the build will start automatically, as you can see there, assuming the successful configure, which it obviously was. So once again, we can check to see if we're using all the cores, and yes, that looks quite high. There's two CCs running there simultaneously, a couple of uh, shells as well, which are probably controlling this compilation. There's three CC ones running there now as well. Now one thing it does say that the test suite, if it's run as the root user, many tests will fail, so I'm going to skip that. Um, I don't see there's any point in that. It'll be pretty meaningless. Um, as I wouldn't know what's down to the root user and what's not down to the root user as far as the failures are concerned.
Okay, so that's compiled successfully. So I'm just going to install and run this uh, symlink command in. And that's complete. Let's just go down and see if there's anything else to do. So yeah, we've got to run this command here. And that's the end of that package. So I remove the directory, close the tab down, and we're now on to make CA. So once again, we'll copy the link, go back to our Raspberry Pi root, wget, center click to paste the link, and download the package. Back to the LFS root, and first thing we're going to do is extract it. And then we have to run these two commands here. It's done. Now it says, as the root user after installing P11Kit, download the certificate source and prepare for system use with the following command. Um, and there's a note, if running the script a second time the same version of cert data, um, add the minus R switch to the command line. So we just need to run this once. And this will generate some certificates, so it'll take a few minutes to do that. And that's done. Now um, it says here that uh, if you want this to be updated automatically, you can add the cron job here. Well, obviously, we haven't installed cron at the moment. Um, and I guess adding, if I try to run this, the cron weekly wouldn't exist because we haven't got cron. Um, so if you did want to have that updated regularly, you'd have to go to install cron and then you'd be able to add this to the weekly cron update directory. So I'm not going to do that. Let's see what else there is to do. Some, um, it says about adding additional certificates here. Uh, let's just quickly read that. Let's see, so wrote to all these. Oh, right, okay, yeah, it's saying that um, if you want to add in additional certificates, this is what you could run. So we can run this to add extra ones in. Oh, of course, we haven't got wget, so um, maybe that's something we can come back to do afterwards. Um, and there's uh, something there about occasionally, maybe instance where you don't agree with Mozilla's inclusion of a particular certificate authority so it's giving you an example there of um, uh, one that is disabled disabling make-believe certificate and how to do it so um, so what I'll do is I'll leave this tab up until we've installed wget then I'll run these commands to install these additional certificates um, so I'll go straight to wget now so I'll leave this make CA directory there and we'll wget wget now. As you can see, this has got an FTP link. This is how I normally do this when I'm in the native LFS environment. I'll use FTP to get wget, build wget, and then start expanding the system from there. But it is more awkward because there's no graphical environment. It's a lot harder to do. So I'll copy this link address again, paste that in, wait for it to download. Go back to the LFS root and extract it. Change into it. And let's just check the extra. No, there's nothing extra there that's worth dealing with. Just copy this to configure and make the package.
Right, so that's built. Let's um, run the tests. It says that some HTTPS tests are known to fail if the Perl module IO socket INET 6 is installed. Well, we haven't got that installed. Um, I don't think it's due to be installed either, currently, anyway. And I don't use INET 6 anyway, IPv6 anyway, so I guess that's what that, that's about. So there, that has produced an error. Last one skip. No, there's no actual errors. Um, that's interesting. Looks like there's actual problem with the testing code. Um, let me just rerun that. No, I don't know what that's about. Whether that's because it's failed or or if there is some other reason. Um, I can't explain that, so I'll just go ahead with make install. And that should be wget installed now, so if I run it, yes, you see it's got actually working now. So I can go back to, let me tie this up first. and get rid of that tab, go back to make CA and this should now work, this set of commands, this set of commands and you can see it's downloaded two, two files there and it's just rerunning the make CA again to update the certificates with the new ones that we've downloaded And that's done. So that's make CA done as well. Close that down and we can carry on with the um, compiling. Did I do test needs? I think I did that one. Oh no, that's right, I was going to do it, but I couldn't because it didn't have a wget, that's right. So now we've got a wget, in theory this should be safe to close this tab down, we have no need for that anymore. So if I copy that link address and type in wget and paste it, there you can see it's downloaded. What's more, it's downloaded from an HTTPS because we've got the make CA installed. If that wasn't installed, we'd have to add an extra option to say ignore the fact that there's um, no security certificates to validate the download against. So let's um, extract that. Note that the tarball begins with a capital T. And we'll just paste these commands in to build it and test it. result pass so let's just install the module now and that's it remove the directory close that down and the next one we want to install is this one here which is URI another Perl module so again wget paste the link in extract it and change into the directory and once again copy and paste the commands and that's a pass so make install and it's done Another Perl module, 
this one is net SSL EAY. So same process, copy the link, add it to wget, extract it, and run the commands. It says here if you're enabling the external test, one may fail. So we'll see if that happens or not. Okay, this test has passed, so let's install the package. And that's complete for that module. So let's remove the source directory, close the tab down, and it looks like we've got one more to install, which is IOSocket SSL. So copy link address again, wget, paste in the address. Extract the archive, change into the directory, and once again just copy and paste the commands. And this is where you can obviously see it's less about learning um, anything else now because it is more of a process of copying and pasting. And this is uh, one of the reasons why Gen 2 is so appealing, it does automate all of this. Right, that's a pass, so uh, you can install the package and tidy it up. So now, finally, we're on to the NTP package. Um, so once again, we'll copy the link address, wget, paste that address, wait for the download to finish. Extract the archive, change into it. Um, just another thing I should mention, um, ideally you should be checking the downloads to ensure the MD5 sum matches, make sure they've not been tampered with or some other sort of modification that um, unaware of one unaware of. So what we're going to do here is add a group and a user specifically for the NTP client to work. There's a little fix here. And then we've got some, yeah, I think this is just explaining what's already in here. Notice they're changing the C flags here, but it does look like it's incorporating our existing C flags. Um, so let's just run the configure on its own and examine the output of it to see what it says.
Okay, that seemed to create three configurations. I didn't notice anything um, specifically that mentioned C flags as it whizzed past. Oh, there's something there. Uh, yeah, it has incorporated the flags. Uh, that's what I expected. So that's okay. We can um, carry on with make. Uh, let's see how long this is expected to take. Uh, oh, not too bad. So it should be fairly quick. Okay, that's um, finished building. We can run some tests. And that's all tested OK, so we can install the package now. And that's done. So all we need to do is to modify or create a config file. Now, we've got some defaults in here. Um, for servers across the world um, you might want to delete the ones that are far away from you and just leave in the one that's local to you or even look up on the internet for um, servers that may be even more local to you in your own particular country um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of all of these and just modify one of them because I've got my own NTP server so I'm just going to set this information to use that server and save it but obviously you'll have to put in um, either I believe one of these that are in the config file or as I say find one on the internet Um, and it says you may we to add may wish to add a security session for explanation. See this. Let's see what this says about it. Oh, that's going to be quite detailed. The looks of it, so I won't read that now. Um, 
So it looks like it appends this to the NCP conf. Now, I'm not sure. I don't think I've ever seen this before that I can recall. I'm not sure how this um, will affect my server, if it will work with my server or not. So um, if it doesn't work, then I'm going to have to remove those lines. Um, let's just check that file. But with the ones that they've listed, it should work fine. There's two options. One is to run NTPD continuously and allow it to synchronize the time in a gradual manner. The other option is to run NTPD periodically and update the time each time the NTPD is scheduled. If you choose option one, then install the init script. So that's the only option we've got at the moment because we haven't got um, cron. So what we need to do is open this link in a new tab because this is another package we need to download. So right click that and get the link address. I'm going to come out of the NTP directory to save this in the BLFS directory. Extract the BLFS boot scripts. Change into it. I don't need this tab anymore. And just run this command here. And I'll leave this directory here in case there's any other daemons. In fact, there is one other daemon I can think of that will be um, installing startup scripts for. So I'll just come out of that. Um, and you can add these. This is probably a better way to add it to set the clock at startup. We definitely want it at startup. So you'll definitely want to add the um, set clock for this RC0D, this first line. That's the one that sets the clock at startup. You definitely want that one. Um, the other one's optional, whether you want to synchronize it at shutdown might be an idea. I doubt if the tire will drift that much. Um, and that is it. I think there is a command to actually... Oh no, there's no point at the moment because we're on the Raspberry Pi OS, so um, that should be it really. So I can remove the NTP directory. And that's the NTP setup now, so um, next time we boot, I'll just delete the make CA directory, I forgot about that one. Next time we boot, we should get the clock being set. Now I didn't show the clock that the clock wasn't set but let me have a look at the right I'm gonna have to mount it. Yeah the command line dot text which I modify to change back to boot to the Raspberry Pi you can see it's defaulted to January the first nineteen eighty so that proves that the clock wasn't working it's the default time um, of the Raspberry Pi way way back in time over 41 years ago um, so that proves that the clock wasn't working so when I boot next time into um, the LFS system I'll do a date command to show that the NTP or just to prove that the NTP command has actually worked so that's NTP all set up ready to go so what remains now is some of these other packages I'll install which are handy to have. 